Hello everybody, welcome to the Bar Zone. Today we're going to talk about all the cool guys of the neighborhood. That's why I got my sunglasses on. I'm going to take them off just so I can have a conversation with you. Um, as you know, I'm talking about the case referring to missing person Anthony Catalano, who has been missing since March 25, 2009 from the Chicagoland area. Located condo was by uh, Burr, uh, which is a Bren Mar in Cumberland, which is up the block, Norwich from Three Hour, where I knew him from. He was from Three Hour. These are the people that I knew. Okay, now specifically what I have, um, I want to just say I have a message for Spike. And Spike, uh, I'm glad to see you're doing okay and you're fine and everything. But I also want to let you know that I never, I'm not turning you in or acting like you killed anybody or anything like that. I'm not even thinking about that and I never told anybody that. What I had concerned was was the last time I saw you. And the last well the last time I saw Tony, okay, which was June two thousand and eight. He wasn't missing till the next year, okay? My concern was the condition of his mind. Okay, my concern was that he was going into shock. Okay, he was staring straight ahead going into shock. I thought maybe you might be concerned about that and he seemed to be wired. Which would, just so you know, I have confirmation from his own family and friends that Anthony did have a back injury. Okay? Anthony did seek prescription drugs. Okay? Anthony did do that. So there is some sort of connection to prescription drugs. Okay? And I just want you to know that, that I never did anything. I never talked about you. I'm not doing nothing. But I do have a concern, you know, that you're denying, like you're thinking that I, I that you're connected to two murders. No way. I'm not saying that. But if you keep denying it, the cop's going to wonder. Just so you know. Okay, another thing I want to bring up. On that day when I saw you outside of Three Hour, I was sitting with Bob. Bob in charge. Little Bob from Three Hour. Okay, now I have 100 people and 100 pictures, including detectives, 50 of them, that can verify who Bob in charge is, including the owner. Remember the flower shop? Okay? That Hector owns and Joanne owns? Okay, so he exists. He was sitting with me and a Mexican girl, and you were on the other side. So don't deny he exists. I just have concern of his condition. Maybe he wandered off because he has disassociation disorder or something like that. Maybe that happened. Yeah, or maybe old deed. Okay, where's the cabin at? Okay, where did you guys, according to Sal, there's a cabin out there that you guys hung at and um, you guys went boating. Whatever it was, I don't know. But I want to um, bring another thing to your attention. Does this person, does this person, um, familiar? Her name is Tasha. It's Andreas Russo's girlfriend. Well, a girl by the name of Michelle Ferrar went into Piazza Cafe gave Tasha this missing person flyer when he was missing. All worried, going down Cumberland Road. I believe that she was with her co his cousin. Okay? Well, my concern is, remember when I seen all these people at Butera in Norwich? I saw Santa. Not one person knew that he was even missing. I saw October 2009 Richie, the auxiliary cop from 3 L. I I saw Mexican Joe he didn't know that Anthony was missing. Not one person, Santa, anybody, including Bob and Charles. I saw Bob. He had no clue that Anthony was even missing. When I showed him Anthony's picture, he acknowledged knowing him from Three Olive, but he did not know he was missing. What is my, my concern with this? My concern is how come nobody from Piazza Cafe, because Michelle brought the missing person flyer to Piazza, how come not one person knew he was even missing? Okay, this is weird. Anyway, so I want to bring another thing to your attention. According to close cool sources of the late, this is from Joe Fosco. I just wrote this down real fast. Took notes on it. One of his comments. According to uh, close cool sources of the Michael DeFilt, um, and tightly connected to that he was tightly connected to drug kingpin. Joseph Gio Jr., I don't know why I got Jr., and not for appropriate reasons. And according to a source that I have known for many years who knew the missing Anthony Catalano, which I, I, I don't know about this one, but whoever knows this, fine, bring, come forward with it. And Giacchino were connected through narcotics prescription dealings. The DEA and Illinois State Medical Inspectors have capabilities to verify if Catalano 
or De Phillips had received prescription drugs from Giacchino, which would confirm said connections that would be additional verification. One problem these two agencies sometimes elect to keep this information from outside sources, including victims and their their families and loved ones and other agencies. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is that is there any way you or anybody else can verify that he was taking prescription drugs? Okay, that's all. Nobody's accusing you of being involved with a murder. This was June of 2008. I don't lie. I don't make up stories. But I do, I can verify, okay, because a lot of my friends were detectives that go into three hours. Okay, and I know, including the captain. Okay, I saw the captain at Three Olive. Okay, the captain of the detectives. He's my best friend. Okay, problem is, is that if you're lying, I mean, he knows who Bob in charge is. Okay, if you're lying, then it's going to make you look guilty. Okay, we're just trying to get answers. Okay, Spike, um, thank you very much. I'm not getting anybody in trouble at Piazza Cafe, and I did not do that, whatever that one message was about uh, Messino. That could be the actual killer trying to throw smoke somewhere and put that comment. I'm thinking that could be Joe Fosco. He's so useless, okay? With his BS, he gets nowhere because he's BSing. Um, the other thing is, is that there's one more thing with the missing person flyers. I sent it in the mail to, Pia to uh, Russo, and he called me up and threatened me. And it's like, uh, and, and there he was calling, or his wife or some girlfriend or something like that was calling uh, the Butera front desk and they're asking me about why you know the thing is is that they should think about what they're doing because if I talk to the FBI I'm going to tell them you did that and they're going to use it against you okay that's already reported three years from now a few years ago Mario Gonzalez SVU everybody knows Andrea Russo's reaction why is missing missing person flyer going to cause a reaction that I receive a phone threat okay so there's little bits and pieces, and also at, it was right at that time, September, right before September 2009, that I received a visit from Reddit. Could be various reasons. I said, like I said, I have three reasons. Um, that could be one of the reasons. All right. Well, again, I'm not accusing you of murder, but if you guys start acting suspicious, it's going on record. This is the bar zone.